Hey guys, I am back with another video. Today's video, well this video, because I have three videos to do today. So this video will be my book of the month. Surprisingly, my box wasn't like, you know, damaged too bad today, you know, with delivery. Um, or should I say the other day, because I've actually had this box for a couple of days. All right. I got three books. And they are not in the plastic wrapping again with the, the cardboard. Um, I don't know if they just, so, you know, are getting away from that. I mean, honestly talking about you know recycling and saving the earth and everything was probably just a bit of a waste but you know what if all right so we got our usual bookmark it says oh hello again and then it says book of the month all right and then I got th like I said I got three books so the first one I got was the vanishing half All right, and it says, twins inseparable as children ultimately choose to live in two different worlds, one black and one white. The Vigny sisters will always be identical, but after growing up together in a small southern black community and running away at age 16, it's not just the shape of their daily lives that is different as adults, it's everything, including their facial or their racial identity. Many years later, one sister lives with her black daughter in the uh, same southern, wait, I'm sorry, I moved, do, 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 do. the same southern town she once tried to escape. Across the country, the other sister secretly passes for white and her white husband knows nothing of her past. Still are those separated by so many miles and just as many lives, the fates of the twins remain intertwined. What will happen when their own daughter's story lines intersect? Weaving, mul weaving together multiple strands of generations from the deep south to California from the 1950s to the 1990s, the vanishing half is at, is at once a riveting emotional family story and brilliant um, exploration of race, gender, and identity and the lasting influence of the past as it shapes a person's desires and expectations. So for some of you guys, if you were like me and you really didn't know what a uh, white passing was, um, I think I knew what it was always. I just didn't understand that there was a terminology for it. Um, but white passing is someone who's brighter than me, very, very fair skin, um, and they're biracial and um, to make a better life for themselves or so they think that they're making a better lives for themselves. They claim their white side and their white identity to pass as a white person so that way they don't have to go through hardships that uh, come along with, you know, black lives, brown lives. And, um, yeah, so in the, you know, the black community. So that is one, sorry if my camera shakes, the table I'm sitting everything on is over there. All right. And then we have the last flight, which I believe is a thriller. Um, it says two women, two flights, one last chance to disappear. You might know a husband like Claire's, ambitious, admired with deep pockets, but behind closed doors, he has a temper that burns as bright as his promising political career. He's not above using his staff to track Claire's every move. What he doesn't know is that Claire has worked for months on a plan to vanish. A chance meeting, a chance meeting in an airport brings her together with a woman who seems equally desperate to flee her life. Together, they make a last-minute decision to switch tickets. Claire takes Eva's flight to Oakland, and Eva travels to Puerto Rico as Claire. But when the Puerto Rican planes crash, Claire's options narrow to one possible choice. Assume Ava's identity, and along with it, the secrets Ava fought so hard to keep hidden. 
with your back against the wall, would you be brave enough to take the chance you, you're given? So that is why I got that. I think uh, it's more like a mystery thriller, it's from my understanding, not like, um, like mystery horror or anything like that. But this one, which um, is now being talked about a lot across booktube, I really didn't even think that it was like, a popular book but I also don't follow authors in their like daily lives and hear about like all the books that they're about to drop and all that stuff but this guy is or person um is a very popular author so I'm finding out and this book is all over booktube and everybody in a mama wants to read it didn't even know so um, I guess I'm on the bandwagon without even knowing that it, <laughs> I was on the bandwagon. But this is supposed to be a thriller, horror type book, um, from my understanding. And this is Home Before Dark uh, by Riley Sager. And this book is ultimately, from my understanding, about um, a girl who comes back to her childhood home only to find out that she's not the only one that's living in the home aka ghosts um but let's see what the summary says it says bells that ring themselves record players that or i'm ooh, i'm tripping bells that ring themselves record players that turn on and play music to empty rooms ghosts that climb out of wardrobes Maggie's Maggie Holt doesn't live in these things even though they are the details of the story that made her family famous 25 years ago she had her parents Iwan and Jess move into ben Bangbury Hall a rambling Victoria Victorian estate in the Vermont woods they spent 20 days there before fleeing in the dead of night and an ordeal Juan later recounted in the horror memoir, House of Horrors, which I have heard of House of Horrors, uh, but actually haven't read it. Um, his tale of ghostly happenings and encounters with me malevolent spirits have become worldwide phenomenon. The riv riveling Amityville horror in popularity and skepticism, and I have read all three books of the Amityville Horror when I was in high school. I probably, they are probably due for a reread, but since I don't own them, I have to buy them. Maggie has lived her life in the shadow of her father's book. So when she inherits Ben Banbury Hall after his death, she returns to renovate the house to prepare it for sale. However, her homecoming is anything but warm. People from the past chronicled in House of Horrors alert in the shadows and locals aren't thrilled that their small town has been made infamous thanks to Maggie's father. Even more unnerving, a Banbury Hall itself, a place filled with relics with another or from another era that hint at a history of dark deeds. As Maggie experiences strange occurrences straight out of Ewan, Ewan's book, she starts to wonder if what he wrote was more than more fact than fiction. Alternating between Maggie's uneasy home homecoming and chapters from her father's book, uh, Home Before Dark is the story of a house with a long with long buried secrets of a woman's quest to uncover them. Even if the truth is far from terrifying, uh, more terrifying than any haunting. Um, so I'm guessing this is actually more of a, um, well, like they said, parts to her dad's book, but so now that's, this is making me actually want to do some research because I've read all of the Amityville Horrors and I've heard of House of Horror, but I've never read House of Horror. So I'm going to have to go back and do some more research unless House of Horror is just a movie, but um, Home Before Dark is the fourth thriller from Riley Sager, the uh, pseudonym of another author who lives in Princeton, New Jersey. Sager's a first novel, Final Girls, was an international was a national and international bestseller that has been published in more than two country two dozen countries, 
won the ITW Thriller Award for Best Hardcover Novel. Sager's sequel novels, The Last Time I Lied and Lock Every Door, were bestsellers. I do have Lock Every Door, but I don't know if I have Last Time I Lied. So... Maybe I can go and read those books before I read this book or go and read A House of Horror before I read this book. Or maybe I can just read this book since I know the Amityville Horror Story and it'll be just about the same. Hmm. Decisions. Well, anywho, that is all of my book of the month picks and that is this video for you. So until next time.